So yeah, if you read that right, I am tired of this blazer. I'm tired of it not being movable. It already runs, I just have to do brakes on it. I've got my trusty gas key in here, dude, and that works great. So yeah, I need to get it where it moves around and is usable, you know. Um, I'm getting ready to actually move this to storage and get the gray Blazer 76, bring it back out of storage and actually put it back together. Cause I gotta get some stuff done uh, with them, get it on the road, and then I'll jump back to this one. But for right now, it needs to be able to drive up on the trailer and be able to move around. I'm tired of pushing it. It's too hard to do when you're by yourself, you know? Uh, so that's what I'm doing now. I, I had to put a new positive and a negative cable on it. Uh, and it had a points distributor in it. Well, I removed that and put a new HEI in it. So it needs a 12 volt key wire for the ignition. So that's what I'm doing next. And the thing will fire up and run. It runs really good. It's got an exhaust leak I want to fix, but I'm just going to wait till I get the other one done and then I can get back on that. Uh, and then start with the rest repair I want to do on it. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to do this 12 volt key wire next. And then I'm going to start and get the brakes working. I've got a new master cylinder, all the hoses, the wheel cylinders. So I'm going to do all that kind of stuff and then get it where it moves and get this thing out of here. Go get it put up and get the other blazer back and I'll start on that. Uh, if you guys notice that rig back there, that's my old 72 Cheyenne truck. It's a three quarter ton camper special. Uh, it's back. I've got to put a transmission and all that kind of stuff in it. And uh, you'll see what I do with it here in the future. So, um, but yeah, definitely my top three vehicles that I wish I would have never gotten rid of. Uh, so glad it's back around. So yeah, what I'm doing now, like I said, I put a new positive, put a new, uh, or po put a new positive and negative on here. I just got to run that 12 volt wire. I'm going to fire this thing up. Um, so yeah, I just got two. Let me get this light here. And what's weird is like, I don't know how they had that hooked up before, but like, yeah, the ignition is 12 volt. I just got to put a little spade connector on it and run a new wire and that thing's going to be good to go. Uh, and what I usually do, like I just parted out that 2500, that black Chevy pickup while well, I saved the harness out of it. I know most people buy new wiring or rewire it, but I'm not going to do that. I actually save these old harnesses because I'm going to remove the right size wire I need for that. And it's good wiring. I mean, you know, try to save some of this stuff and reuse it. It'll be nice and clean and it'll work. So, but yeah, this thing, man, the engine runs really good. We've actually drove around the field out here. If you've seen that in my previous video, uh, we have done that. And man, it has, when they sit, they end up being a storage. It's got stuff on top of it stuff inside of it look at this it's basically a catch-all for everything that we need to be put up so but yeah pretty good rig man i like it it's gonna be a good project it's gonna make a great hunting and camping and fishing rig i don't do too much hunting but i do like to go fishing and i like to go camping so and the two blazers probably in the next year maybe the year after that once we get them all lined out we're gonna take them on an epic trip and it's going to be a lot of fun so this i'm going to get started on making this wire and we'll move on to the next next step so this is the second little addition of the blazer i've got it actually running really really good Daddy, i can't believe it's been running. i'll let you down i've got it running really good the engine runs i'm just amazed how well this thing's been sitting for third well almost 25 26 27 years something like that and uh yeah i've got the motor where it hits on the key i got the cables on it i got the 12 volts hooked up to the distributor i mean it hits right yeah, off got the pliers. you did I got the pliers. so the next thing i need to do is start on the brakes but this exhaust leak is driving me crazy so it had some bolts missing on this driver's side I put a couple of them in, but it's got something going on in the number seven cylinder. And I'm really thinking about going and tackling that because this thing has got the factory exhaust on it. Like this thing is so original that it has been untouched. This thing has never had more than a 31 inch tire on it. I mean, I'm really happy with this thing. It does got some rust. It does got some stuff I need to fix. What's up? Oh, okay. The frame where the steering box is, these things are notorious for cracking. This has no cracks in it. So, very lucky that I found this. 
and everything. So, but yeah, that's what I'm doing next. I think I'm gonna tackle that exhaust leak and then I'm gonna remove the old gas tank cause it's no good, it's garbage. And uh, I got some rust to repair back here so I won't put it back in for quite a while. Um, and then I gotta get the brakes working. But yeah, the, I just wanna get this thing where it starts and moves. And I kinda wanna take it on a little drive before I start fixing the rust. So uh, that's what I'm working on now. I'm gonna jump on that exhaust and fix that. And then I'm gonna work on the brakes. So, and then another thing I did too, this oil has not been changed in forever. And I've had, I have not changed it. So what I did right before we went on our uh, Florida trip, I had like 1,800, 2,000 miles in the motorhome while I had really good oil and that comp cams zinc additive in it. So I just saved that oil because I knew I was gonna flush this motor out. So what I did is I drained that old nasty oil out of it and put the uh, oil out of the motorhome in it. And I'm just gonna let it heat cycle a couple of times and then I'll put the good oil in it and all that. But so far it doesn't have any leaks. I mean, it will after you drive it because Usually when these things set this long, they acquire a few leaks, but the biggest thing I'm gonna have to do is they had the pan off the transmission for some reason and the guy doesn't remember why he did it. So I'm really thinking that when this thing gets up to full temperature, I think it's gonna stop pulling. So I'm gonna eventually, I'm gonna get the rust fixed first, but I'll pull that transmission and have it rebuilt. I'm just, I'm not gonna mess with it. And it does, the pan leaks a little bit. So, but yeah, that's what I'm working on at this moment, so. Off. I still don't trust this quite yet because you never know if this thing could just catch on fire or something. If you leave it overnight, it's always going to be better than you off. Fire it in. Turn that key. So yeah, you can hear that exhaust leak. It's kind of gnarly, but this thing is quiet. Yeah, I can't deal with that. So, but yeah, if it wasn't for that exhaust leak, you wouldn't even hear this thing run. So yeah. You want to get out? Okay, let's get out. Come on out of there. But yeah, just slowly but surely. 45 minutes to an hour every day. It'll be, uh, hopefully I get to take it for a drive here pretty soon. But yeah, I'm just gonna heat cycle it a few times, let it warm up really good and then move on to the next thing. But yeah, I think I'm gonna take that exhaust manifold loose and get, I think it's got a bolt broken off in the cylinder head. I'll weld the nut to it, heat it up, get that out of there and try to get that sealed up because i that's one thing squeaking belts exhaust leaks and like mismatched tires like i'm not gonna i just i gotta fix it so but yeah i think this will make a pretty good rig I re i'm really happy with it i don't know if i'm gonna spot in like i did on my chevelle out there because i really just want to drive it i don't really want to like restore it you know but i'm pretty sure i'll repaint the whole thing but there's a lot to repaint a car like you get a, and I think I'm gonna do a satin kind of paint job on the green because like all the trim and stuff needs to be restored. You, you don't think about that like, oh, I want a, the car painted, but you don't think about all the bright work that goes on it. It could be, it is so expensive. I had a 71 Chevelle that I did, painted it and bought every piece of trim, chrome, bumpers, everything. That was expensive and I'm just, I'm over it, you know? I mean, I just wanna drive these cars. I wanna use them. I don't wanna restore one because I'm really bad. When it gets nice, I won't use it. It'll just sit and like, I just want something I can use, so. But yeah, so I'm gonna make a little video on the exhaust leak. I'll start on that next and do the brakes and then it's going to get put up and then the 76 Blazer's coming over here. And then we gotta get the transmission out of this. And so I got, got a lot of footage to make, so.
What's up guys? I'm gonna get started on this next little project. I'm gonna go ahead and be working on getting this exhaust manifold off. It's got a bolt broken off back there and it's leaking. And that just makes you crazy, man. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the, my little acetylene torch, heat the bolts up, try to get that, get this thing off there. So yeah, it's a nice hot summer day. It's probably gonna be over a hundred degrees. So I figured I better get started. So I'm gonna get my tools out and we'll get ready. And yeah, here we go. No sense in being rushed and in a hurry. So, okay. Okay, we got a little bit of movement, but that's not wanting to move very much. Our socket's not wanting to slide up on there that well. And that thing is hot. Get some of it. There it is, backing out of there. And my camera. Is out of focus. Why did you do that? Hold on just a second. I got the bolt loose. Let's see this real fast. There we go. So yeah. It just got out of focus a little bit. Let me see if I can set that right back up there. Because as it cools off, it's going to get a little bit harder and a little bit harder to do. And you know how you can never get it back the way it was. What is the deal? That's weird. How come it doesn't want to focus? Alright, let's see if we can get that off here. So yeah, before this would have broken right off because that stuff's just, when it gets hot, those manifolds run like 350 degrees. So sometimes I would imagine even hotter. But, um, yeah, cold, you just snapped it right off. So, yeah, a little map gas torch, a little set, just anything to heat it up. You will get it there. And then sometimes the stud will screw out, a man, out of the manifold, and that's not a big deal. As long as nothing breaks off in there, because then you're welding nuts to that, and you're heating it on the bench, and it just seems so much easier to me to do it this way. Takes a little bit more time, gonna have a few of the extra tools, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get these other two. And uh, we'll go to the top side, what I'm afraid of. Well, it'll be a kind of a catch 22 because that very back side, I don't know where the bolt broke off at. So if it broke off too far in the head, that's not gonna be good. But if it breaks off, say sticks out an inch from the cylinder head, and I hopefully I'll be able to weld a nut to it. But what happens is, with this being just the Y pipe still, there's no movement. I can't take the pipe off because it's still connected to the passenger side. So what I'm gonna have to do is get that manifold off there because there'll be probably at least half of that bolt still sticking through there. So it'll be kind of tricky to get it off. But again, none of this is out of necessity. We'll get it done. But yeah, that's what I'm up against. So, but yeah, all in all to get this exhaust leak fixed, be very worth it, so. 
So yeah, we've started up here, got the rear bolt out. I moved up to this guy right there. That thing was so tight, it was gonna break off. So I had to put a little bit of heat to it. I heated from the front of the bolt all the way across the manifold to the cylinder head and just kind of worked my way back until I got that bolt head glowing. And by then I was okay, so I got a little 3 8 cheater and kind of got on it. I loosened it, but then I went back. So I would just, I worked it back and forth, you know, put a couple inches this way, a couple inches that way, and, uh, you know, just rock the bolt back and forth, you know, where it just loosens it up. And I finally, I got it, it'll come on out. Uh, those two are the ones that were completely missing that I put in it when I first got it. And then this one just loosened right up. And in all of my years of having these small block Chevys and stuff, now big blocks are different. They seem to get really hot and I've seen quite a few, not, not, not as much on the Chevys I've worked on, but like the Fords, I've had a couple 460s. Every one of those bolts, are bre they break off in those. I don't, know I don't know why, it just seems more common on a big block. But this has not had, of all the small block Chevys I've had, these are the first exhaust manifold bolts that were actually on the engine that have broken off. Usually they always come loose. It's the head pipes down there at the bottom. Those are the ones that always break off and you gotta heat them. So this is a new one on me, but but yeah, I pulled the plugs and it is, I can smell it's running very, very rich. I don't know if you can see that or not. And they smell just like wet gas. So I think it's got a vacuum leak because this Quadrajet came off that 79 Camaro that I've got. And I got it actually off a running El Camino. So I know the thing works good and everything so I, it's had a problem since i put it on here but i'm still pretty sure that i've got a vacuum leak a little bit so i mean it still needs some tuning uh so i'm gonna try to get it to run the best it can i might i want to put like an like a howl efi setup on it because i know i like edelbrock carburetors they've i know everybody likes hollies better and that's that's cool you know but uh i like for just daily drivers i like a five or six hundred cfm edelbrock carburetor so i don't know i'd like to put if this quadrajet because i know nothing about quadrajets i know they're awesome i know they work fantastic i just don't know how to work on them you know and i know there's guys that know them through and through but uh at this point in my life i just don't have time to sit there and i don't have anybody to really show me how to tune one very well so it's like would i keep it absolutely if i knew how to tune it and if i knew how to make it work because the thing about this thing is it's going to be going on long trips and everything so my whole idea behind this build and even that 76 blazer is and even the motorhome for that matter is i need to be able to fix it when i'm six seven eight nine hundred miles from home so i'm just trying to keep it as simple as possible that way i can take just a box full of parts and when i do break down i'm able to get back on the road and get back on my feet and everything you know it scares me about the little EFI setups, even though like my Chevelle's LS box, even though it works good, there's something that's going to catch you out one of these days, you know? And it's like, will I be able to fix it on the fly and be able to get back on the road, you know? That's the things that worry me. And really like these, I know they're old, they're not as efficient, but they will work and they work great. And they're so simple to work on. So that's why, I mean, my first thing I was like, oh, I'm gonna put a, 5.3 in this thing and do the LS deal, which would be awesome and efficient, but at the same time, it's like if something happens, I may not have the parts to fix it. Where this, I've got enough Chevrolet stuff that's got small blocks. I can at any time rob parts and even with my stash I've got, I've got parts to take with me. I can get it, unless it's just a catastrophic, the crank comes out of the bottom of it or you know, the axle locks up or the transmission quits pulling. I can usually, get this thing get them back on the road so that's kind of like my mindset with this whole build and even the other one is just keep it simple where you can keep moving and moving on with it so but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get these bolts out and try to get this manifold off so i got the manifold off and i didn't have any of the bolts sticking out of the cylinder head so we're about to find how far it's broke off in there or maybe the threads are stripped out or something it's just so f weird really it acts like there's no bolt in it at all but i could not get nothing to start so that's kind of odd doesn't act like there's no bolt in it guys that's i don't think you could get that lucky 
So let me see if I can get a bolt here. Well, I've already got a bolt. I literally tried several times to put a bolt in this thing and it would not take one. Yes, it's kind of weird. It's like the threads are messed up or something. No? Well, something's up. Maybe I'll get a, a tap and just clean it out. But it feels like the threads are damaged. I don't know, we'll see. Kind of got lucky, but maybe not. So my intention here was to make you guys a video of what happens when you find a broken exhaust manifold bolt, you know. Uh, but it turns out that's not the case with this. All that was wrong with it was the first couple threads in the cylinder head were damaged, so it wouldn't take a bolt. So I've ran this tap in, I've sprayed it with penetrating oil, I'm going to clean it really well. So I'm going to tell you, I'm not a gambler. I don't like really taking chances. You know, I don't buy lottery tickets. I don't do any of that kind of stuff. I have a better chance of getting struck by lightning than winning anything. But I'd say today, I have definitely gotten lucky. So, if I ever buy a lottery ticket today, may be my day. But yeah, so... Yeah, I had intentions of making a good video of getting a broken bolt out of an engine. But, in all you do, I can still go over it. Like say you pulled that exhaust manifold and it was like broken off here, here, anywhere. Sometimes even when they're broken off flush, like the LS motors and the Dodges, a lot of them, they'll just break off flush with the motor. So what you'll do is you'll just take a nut, like a little 3 8 nut. I clean it really good. I will take, put it up against the block and I will weld a bead on the inside of it where my finger is there. And then I'll kind of heat it up and then I'll just work it back and forth. And once that heat gets to it, most usually you can back what's left of that thing out. So, but yeah, that explains why I haven't seen very many small block Chevys with the bolts broken off in them because that's not actually what was wrong with this. It just had some bad threads. So I will take, just run it in there. I'm gonna spray and clean it out, but bam. Problem solved, man. So yeah, I'd say uh, got pretty lucky on this one. So I'm gonna run down and get some gaskets. I think I actually have some. And we'll put this bad boy back together and see if this motor is gonna make any ticking noises. So. so back out here at it, had some other things I had to work on. Got the exhaust gaskets. And I figured now was a fantastic time to these all these brake hoses every time I work on one of these I change all the brake hoses because the thing's been these probably original this rig you know and uh, so with the exhaust manifold off of it you can get right inside the frame and remove that brake hose so I figured why not go ahead and get that knocked out so I'm in the process of taking this old one off Oh, you got a little mess there. I didn't think it had any fluid left in it. So, yeah, <coughs> gonna go ahead since I can get to it and it's accessible. Change that line out, and then we'll put the exhaust on it. You can never get a light where you want it. But yeah, I'm a big fan of changing these brake hoses out because what'll happen? You'll get this thing going. These hoses get so old that the lines in them they'll just break down what will happen especially on these hot days we're having now is you'll get it out and you'll hit the brakes the pressure will go through it but the hose will swell up won't come back well it'll collapse the caliper and it will just stay locked up well, what will happen you'll be driving and it's just going to cause friction it'll get the rotors you'll warp your rotors and then they will because you'll feel it it'll pull to one side really bad and then what it'll do is the heat will go in there and it'll basically just boil that uh, grease out of your bearings and they will end up, man, that light is bright. Those will end up welding themselves, the inner uh, race of that bearing will basically weld itself to that spindle. I had a Bronco that did that one time. And uh, it, it can make a knot, you know, it's easier to change the hose than it is to, it's just easier to get this done while it's all torn down. 
So yeah, I wish I would have thought of that when I had the starter off the passenger side and I was over there working on it, but I was just, I was in such a hurry. I only have sometimes between 15 to 45 minutes a day, if that much, to ever work on this stuff. So when I'm, when I have time to work on it, I, ha I don't have any time to play around. I got to get after it. So uh, I've been pretty fortunate today. I had quite a bit of time, so. But yeah, I'm gonna get this hose changed. I'm gonna put this exhaust manifold back on, and then we're gonna fire it up and see how quiet it is, and then it'll be ready to do the oil change on it, and then I'll uh, remove the old gas tank, and then we will finish getting the brakes done on it, and then that way it'll move, move and stop, and I won't have to be pushing this thing anymore. And I'm gonna take it on a short drive, so it'd be pretty neat to take a spin in this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that brake hose changed and start putting this manifold back on. So we will see what it sounds like. All right, so we got that old crusty hose off. Yeah, tell me that you want to put your vehicle together and trust that, man, this thing is old as the hills. So yeah, we'll take that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw it right out here. That way I'll forget about it in the morning and then I'll end up hitting that with my lawnmower. So. The idea is I'll throw it in the trash, but I'll forget about it probably. So yeah, let's get this hose on there and get this manifold on and see what it sounds like. So yeah, took the wire wheel, cleaned up those surfaces, cleaned these up. I think we got a pretty good contact pat. So I'm gonna bolt the manifold on and we'll see what we got. So the manifold is on. I gotta reroute those wires to make them look a little bit better, but we're just gonna test to make sure that it's not making no noise and has any exhaust leak. This brake hose is now changed. It's looking all nice and pretty while everything else isn't. The lower of the exhaust manifold is hooked back up. We did have to put some washers. What am I? Oh, yeah, right there. Under it because the studs kind of falling apart. But, you know, it's good enough for now. So, And you got to watch while not wearing any pants or anything because the rust would cut you up. So let's give this thing a start and see how it does. Yeah, that's the first start. No engine noise, no ticking, no exhaust leak. So that's a win. the square body that's got like factory exhaust on it. I can't believe this thing is this quiet. Although it's not in that good of shape, it's, re it's really neat to see it like that.
So yeah, the next video, we'll go ahead and get on the brakes, get the uh, old gas tank out, and we're going to get into the first drive. So I'm pretty excited about it. It's been a while. It's set too long. I just had other priorities come up and I hadn't, you know, been able to mess with it. But uh, yeah, if you like what we're doing with this little channel, like and subscribe, and I'll keep making videos and we'll keep dragging them out of the woods and getting them going. So.